Okay, in this segment, we're going to be looking at the PMOS source follower. And we're going to do that by um, mapping our NMOS results into corresponding PMOS results. So first of all, um, the question arises, um, how do we come up with a PMOS version of the circuit from the NMOS version? And that process I would describe as flipping in the circuit upside down. So this is the NMOS version of the circuit. We have two transistors, the source follower transistor, whose input voltage is on the gate, and output voltage is on the source. And then we have a bias voltage VB with MB. And to flip this thing upside down, um, we literally will convert uh, NMOS transistors into PMOS transistors. And um, if we had PMOS transistors in the original circuit, they would become NMOS transistors. Ground becomes VDD, VDD becomes ground. And we'll find that the circuit is literally flipped upside down. And so uh, here we have ground, it becomes VDD. All right, so the source of MB was connected to ground. So MB in the PMOS circuit, its source will be connected to VDD. So this is VB. The drain of MB was V out. So it's still V out. That's also the source of MSF. So MSF is now a PMOS transistor. Source is connected to V out. The input is on the gate. And the drain of MSF was VDD. Now the drain is ground. And so this is the corresponding PMOS version of the circuit. Now, um, to map results, uh, we use the following basic principle. Um, statements that were true up from ground Be true down from VDD. Okay, so how does that work? So uh, for the for analysis of the voltage transfer characteristics, so for the NMOS, source follower. out was kappa times V in minus VB. And that was true for V in greater than or equal to VB plus VDS sat over kappa. And so we would like to find the corresponding statements that, cor that correlate to the, or the hold true for the PMOS source follower. Okay, so for the, for the PMOS, we replace V out with VDD minus V out. We replace V in with V uh, VDD minus V in, and we replace VB with VDD minus VB. So V out becomes VDD minus V out. V in becomes VDD minus V in, and VB becomes VDD minus VB. So we have V 
V out, rather V to D minus V out. equals kappa times v to d minus v in minus v to d minus v b. So obviously, if we like, we can distribute the minus sign here through that, and we get minus v to d plus v in, or rather v b. That gets rid of one parenthesis there. We have a VDD minus a VDD, so we get VDD minus V out equals kappa times VB minus V in and so we can rearrange this and solve for V out, so if we move the V out to that side and move this to the other side we get something like V out equals V to D minus kappa times V B minus V in. So that would correspond to our first equation. That would be an equation for our uh, voltage transfer characteristic. And now we'd like to find the inequality constraint that would correspond to the constraint that we had on the input voltage to ensure that VB or rather MB is saturated <coughs> and so we again need to do this mapping only for this inequality so we had V in greater than or equal to, so it's V to D minus V in greater than or equal to V to D. Keep not being able to decide whether I want the uppercase or the lowercase, minus V B. V D S sat actually becomes V. SD sat. So we could we could say well VDS is VD minus VS and we could replace VD with VDD VDD minus VD and VDD minus VS for VS. The VDDs would cancel and we would get V source to drain instead of V drain to source. And so the particular one that causes, or this is the boundary for saturation, we could call it the SD sat. So I'm just going to do that. But here, um, we, can keep, we can subtract a VDD from both sides, which implies that minus VN must be greater than or equal to minus VB plus VSD sat over kappa. And now we'd like to get rid of this minus sign here, and we can do that. Um, by multiplying both sides by minus 1. But when we do this, we have to remember that the inequality, uh, the sense of the inequality has to flip when we multiply it both sides by a negative number. The other thing we could do is we could imagine transposing both sides to the other side, and that would, in effect, have, have the same result. Um, but let's just multiply by minus 1 and flip this, the sense of the inequality. So it would be V in less than or equal to VB minus VSD sat over kappa. Okay, so if we collect these things up, you can sketch this. V out equals V to D. minus kappa VB minus V in for V in less than or equal to VB minus V S D sat over kappa. Of 
course, we could sketch this from the equation, but we can also sketch it by just transforming the NMOS voltage transfer characteristic appropriately. So let's just sketch up the voltage transfer characteristic we had for the NMOS. This is VDD. This is VDD. And we have our box. And our identity line. We have it equals V in. And for the NMOS, we had, uh, let's say we had VB, let's say right here. And um, we had a characteristic that looks something like it's got a slightly shallower slope than that. Let's say something like that. Slope is kappa. And um, what was true up from ground maps into true from down to uh, maps into being true down from VDD on both axes. And so what we can do is we can basically flip this curve about we can map this point here to VDD, we can map this point here to VDD, and we would get a curve that looks something like see this is this would be VDD minus VB here and so that might be up here and if I can draw this it would be something like that. And so the intercept of the extrapolated model would go through the VDD line up here at VB minus kappa, or rather, I'm sorry, VDD minus VB. And the slope here would be kappa. So this is the NMOS, and this would be the PMOS. Okay, so uh, you can do this for any any circuit, uh, any any CMOS circuit. If you have an NMOS prototype, and you want you know something about the NMOS prototype and you'd like to map it into a corresponding statement about a PMOS version of the circuit, um, you flip the circuit upside down to get the PMOS version and um, you basically map the voltages um, which were, you map the voltages into VDD minus the voltage and you may have to do some simplification um, and that, that's really all there is to it. Um, when I'm confronted with a PMOS version of a circuit, I usually uh, actually flip it upside down, think about the NMOS version of the circuit, uh, work with that, and then uh, flip the result back upside down if I need to. Um, that's, that's what I do, but you know your mileage may vary. If you would prefer to, uh, to work with the PMOS directly, that's fine too. Uh, but this is, this is, uh, I found it something to be useful, so I wanted to just share it with you. Um, yeah, so this is a short one. Uh, we will start on uh, the differential pair uh, next time, which is, um, which is a very important circuit. The source follower is an important circuit in its own right. Um, but for us, it's going to be a stepping stone to uh, being able to think about the differential pair. You can kind of think of the differential pair as a competing pair of source followers. Um, anyway, uh, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.